everyone, this is the big fight and I'm Maria Shakil. Weeks to go for the general elections and women voters have taken center stage again. There is competitive populism among political parties to woo this crucial vote block. The recent SBI report has projected a total voter turnout of 68 crore of which women voters would be at 33 crores, which is roughly around 49%. Some more numbers for you. In the assembly elections in 23 states in the last five years, the turnout of women voters was significantly higher compared to their male counterparts in 18 states. Election after election, this crucial demographic has tilted the balance of power. So no party can be seen ignoring the Nari Shakti. And as expected, there is a plethora of announcements targeting women in this election as well. From Modi government's extension of rupees 300 per LPG cylinder subsidy under the Yujwala Yojana, Ujwala Yojana to Amadni Party's 1000 rupees per month for every woman above the age of 18 in the national capital, to Trinamool Congress's remuneration hike of 750 per month for Asha and Anganwadi workers. Women first is now the strategy of all parties. And why not? Because there has been a consistent increase in voter turnout for women in Lok Sabha polls as well. One more statistics here, ladies and gentlemen. In 2019 general elections, it registered in fact a 5.1% 5, 5 increase in women voters. So this Women's Day, we decided to put the spotlight on the Mahila voter with the hope that women representation in parliament will also go up from 78 in the 17th Lok Sabha to perhaps more in the upcoming 18th Lok Sabha. Let's begin the big fight. And I have Sanju Varma, spokesperson of the BJP, Manisha Priyam, political analyst here in the studio, Nirja Chaudhary, senior journalist. We'll be joined uh, by Alka Lamba in just a bit. Uh, Vijila Satyanath is AIA DMK Women's Wing Secretary. We also have Yazini uh, PM, who is spokesperson of DMK. Priyanka Bharti is national spokesperson of RJD. And Abhinandita Mathur is spokesperson of Amadni Party. Uh, beginning with you, Sanju Varma. You know, because, uh, of course, the BJP is talking about representation, but this specific announcement which has come in, welfare schemes of freebies targeted at women have influenced election results. And uh, BJP's largely Behna scheme is considered to be a big factor behind your landslide victory in Madhya Pradesh. But in these Lok Sabha elections, we aren't really seeing any money specific in the sense that giving that amount to women's hand as other st uh, other parties are doing. Okay, uh, you stand corrected. It is national spokesperson of BJP. Yes. Uh, Maria, you know, uh, I don't know. You always get it wrong for some strange reason. Thank you. Okay. Uh, now coming to uh, the uh, pertinent question that you asked. Uh, let's be very clear. Uh, you know, I've been on a couple of debates since evening ever since that 100 rupee reduction in uh, LPG prices was announced with people saying, oh, this is Modi's way of tokenism. Oh, this has been done with an eye on elections around the corner. I mean, there are elections every three months, either urban body, civic body, municipal, panchayat, state level, what have you. Uh, so to time every welfare move uh, by keeping an eye on elections is absolutely next to impossible. Uh, so people who make that reckless allegation, uh, you know, I think uh, good luck to them. But no, thank you. That's not the case. I will just say this. If you look at, I always say that, you know, uh, rather than getting carried away by one measure or another, uh, look at uh, things holistically, look at things in their entirety. And if you look at uh, the uh, Modi government's track record in the last 10 years, you know, beat uh, the fact that the eighth crore Ujwala beneficiary was Aisha Sheikh, a Muslim woman from a small village called Ajanta village in Maharashtra, or for that matter, the 10th crore Ujwala beneficiary was a woman called Meera Manji from the extremely backward caste uh, from Ayodhya. Or for that matter, if you look at a Kiran Kumari from Bokaro in Jharkhand, uh, who was a hawker, was a pavement dweller, uh, was a destitute, and uh, today she runs a gift shop and actually employs three other people along with her, thanks to Pradhan Mantri Mudra Yojana, which has empowered her. What is the common refrain or the common theme? It basically means that Narendra Modi's grand ambition embraces flawless execution. It is all fine to 
or you know announce grandiose schemes but if you are not able to execute them then they remain flaky castles in the air for instance without being verbose look at the direct benefit transfer which has uh, you know transfer more than 30 30 30 lakh crore which is more than 6 and a half percent of india's gdp to the poorest sections now obviously it is women who are the big beneficiaries when we say that 120 million uh, pipe uh, water connections have been given 12 crore water connections hmm. who's benefiting it is the grihalakshmi or for that matter when you say that you know 80 crore people are being given free ration every single month right since the start of covid in 2020 and we are in the fourth year now in 2024 who's the biggest beneficiary it is women folk and uh, last but not the least i would end by saying this people say oh you know smriti rani defeated rahul gandhi this was you know a tukka it happened once uh, you know but it's not going to happen again if you ask any woman voter in amethi they will repeatedly tell you that for the longest time they did not send their young girls to schools and colleges because there was no toilet available public toilet naam ki cheez hi nahi thi hmm. and look at narendra modi if more than 12 crore toilets have been built if india has become open defecation free in more ways than one who does it benefit it benefits the mahila voter okay. so i think to dismiss narendra modi's welfareism as just freebies is being absolutely presumptuous you have to give the man credit where it is due okay Sanju Verma, national spokesperson of the BJP, has made her point. Uh, Alka Lamba, welcome on the show. Thank you. Uh, you know, the BJP seems to be having a plan as far as the women voters are concerned. In Himachal, you did come up with a strategy. Uh, so did the party come up with a plan in the state of Karnataka as well. In the upcoming Lok Sabha polls, because if we were to look at the list which has come out, the representation of women will be a question that will be asked. I mean, how how many women are there in the first list of the Congress? देखिए first list thirty nine की है. जी. उसमें पांच महिलाएं हैं. अभी बाहरी list आना बाकी है. But मैं आपको ये कह रही हूँ कि जो दावे वो कर रहे हैं, जो दावे हम कर रहे हैं, उसका मापदंड क्या है? उसका मापदंड है कि अगर आप हमारे साठ साल, पचास साल की बात करें और दस साल, मापदंड वही है कि महिलाओं का आर्थिक सशक्तिकरण, सशक्तिकरण कितना हुआ अगर आप हमारे कार्यकाल की तुलना करेंगे तो आपका राजनीतिक सशक्तिकरण तैतीस प्रतिशत आरक्षण पंचायत नगर निगमों में चौदह लाख बहने आज पंच सरपंच और मेयर हैं ये राजनीतिक सशक्तिकरण है आपके दौरान क्या हुआ तैतीस प्रतिशत महिला आरक्षण कानून बन गया लागू नहीं होगा एक सौ अस्सी बहने इसी दो हजार चौबीस में पार्लियामेंट पहुंच सकती थी आपने वंचित रखा अब आ जाता है सामाजिक न्याय सामाजिक न्याय क्या आप कह रहे शौचालय बना दिए पर आप बलात्कारों को नहीं रोक पाए आप अगर मणिपुर से बात करेंगे तो आदिवासी बेटियों का सामूहिक बलात्कार बीएचयू की बेटी का सामूहिक बलात्कार बिल्किस बानो के साथ सामूहिक बलात्कारियों की रिहाई साक्षी मलिक को न्याय ना मिलना ब्रजभूषण शर्म का मुक्त घूमना हरियाणा के मंत्री संदीप दीक्षित संदीप सिंह पर कोई कार्रवाई ना होना है ना और अभी कानपुर में बेटियों के साथ सामूहिक बलात्कार के बाद फांसी पर झूल जाती है और पिता भी न्याय की उम्मीद छोड़कर फांसी पर झूल गया मध्य प्रदेश में एक पति ने अपने दोनों बच्चों के साथ फांसी ले ली क्योंकि उम्मीद नहीं तो ये सामाजिक न्याय ये सुरक्षा के दावे पूरी तरह फेल हुए हैं आर्थिक न्याय की बात करेंगे राजस्थान में हमारी सरकार थी 500 रुपए का एलपीजी सिलेंडर मिल रहा था मोदी की गारंटी 500 नहीं साढ़े चार में देंगे उम्मीद थी साढ़े चार का घोषणा हो जाएगी आज कि देश में साढ़े चार रुपए का एलपीजी सिलेंडर राजस्थान मध्य प्रदेश छत्तीसगढ़ देश की महिलाओं को मिलेगा आप क्या कर रहे हैं तारीखों से पहले सौ रुपया कम करके आप अपनी छाती पीट रहे हैं संजू वर्मा थैंक यू या यू नो मारिया फर्स्ट लेट मी मेक वन थिंग वेरी क्लियर ये जो यहां पर बैठकर कहते हैं कि सामाजिक सशक्तिकरण भाजपा ने नहीं किया कांग्रेस ने किया आई से डिस्पाइट माई पोलिटिकल एफिलिएशन टू द बीजेपी डिस्पाइट बींग नेशनल स्पोक्स पर्सन ऑफ द सत्ताधारी पार्टी इन पावर इफ देर इज अ केस मेड आउट अगेंस्ट ब्रिजभूषण अ थाउजेंड पेज चार्जशीट हैज बीन फाइल बाई द बीजेपी आई हैव इवन ट्वीटेड अबाउट इट देर आर सम थिंग्स विच आर बियॉन्ड पोलिटिकल आइडियोलॉजी वट हैव यू आदिवासी बेटिया दिल्ली की दहलीज पे बैठी थी आपने नहीं सुना साक्षी मलिक से प्रधानमंत्री जी नहीं मिले ओके संजू प्लीज कम बैक बिकॉज यू हैव मेड योर पॉइंट Go ahead. No, when when she was speaking, I was not aware. Yes, you please go ahead. Go ahead. Hmm. You know, I don't want to be part of a debate where you are not able to moderate. 
Did I heckle this woman even once? No. She should, uh, you know, wait for her turn rather than getting all the action. You have to listen to your mother. Hey, sir, stop. Hey, madam, stop. Hey, 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 ंगय I have said in as many terms, if there is a case made out against Bridge Bhushan Sharan, let him be hanged by the news. But जो लोग यहाँ पर TV पर बैठकर बिल्किस बानो की दुआई देते हैं, अरे चुप हो जाओ। Supreme Court के कहने के बाद है FIR। Maya, what is wrong with you? Fine, you can continue with this debate. I refuse to debate with this woman. When you can moderate your debate, you call the BJP. I am not doing this. इनको भागने के लिए बहुत चाहिए। We will have Sanju Verma again with us in just a bit. But Manisha Priyam, you know the larger question is about what do these schemes really do in terms of ensuring women as voters we have seen election after election this is the constituency which is deciding the victor so it's been a while that women have been tilting the balance and what we tend to call popular schemes look at the nature of things that women are uh, turning out in large numbers to tell you and it's been there since ntr the 1 rupee kg rice scheme brings ntr you know it uproots the congress party in the state of andhra pradesh so well then the united state of andhra pradesh since then on you've seen that very modest amounts or supports to the household such as the gas cylinder at a particular price etc or so this basically tells you that women in india they are not able to make money in the labor market and that's a structural situation and that structural situation is something that women are turning out in large numbers and voting for their rights and the more we are recognizing that the woman is the one who looks after the household hmm. has to manage the household even a modest amount of cash support and what we think as freebies lpg is on controlled and lpg means woman doesn't have to go to get firewood she has to walk 3 hours come back 3 hours the child who accompanies her is not able to go to school for 3 days so one cylinder frees up time for the girl to go to school yeah. and for the woman to be an economic laborer so you have to understand that these dreams are dreams of the women who are marginal women who we don't see but they hold up india today and therefore i don't consider them populist the more any political party mm. will be able to imagine what the poor woman of this country needs and she is asserting with her rights coming on to that voting booth and saying that recognize me i am holding it all up for you and i think the more the political parties will be in direct conversation with women it's not just the schemes you've got to be in conversation yeah. with them you will be able to tilt the balance that's what it is all about okay since uh, the congress party <coughs> also has raised objections to this monthly cash allowance yeah. which has been announced by the aam aadmi party uh, for uh, women in the national capital of 1000 rupees i'm going to bring you first uh, if you can express your thoughts abhinandita and then i i'll get a congress response on that oh. certainly <clears throat> unfortunate that the bjp spokesperson has uh, exit this conversation it would have been nice to actually give her a uh, give us a piece of our mind and because the, the bjp has firstly no locus at all to talk about women's issues at this point uh, now talking about the actual uh, uh, debate around you know what is a freebie what is a not now as far as the women in india are concerned we have two models before us to choose from one is the bjp kind of model which is that you know we will not provide you security we will in fact garland your rapists um, we will ensure injustice we will ensure that uh, you know you don't feel safe we will also ensure that you lose jobs and we will also not give you any money and we will not take care of you we will not empower we, you we will make mobility difficult for you we will make career difficult for you and right from the beginning we are going to destroy the schools and colleges so that all you girls who go to public schools will never get the opportunity to actually compete equally in a in the market the other model is and i'm really proud of it is the aam aadmi party model which we can see in delhi where basically your mobility is free which ensures that you do actually have the opportunity to travel for tuition or your work and so on 
you also end up saving and the saving that comes from the family actually then it, there is enough evidence of these studies actually benefits the girls the other point is that you know there are so many cases we've seen and so many of our beneficiaries who uh, who confess that you know if they had a a uh, son and a daughter they would actually send the son to a better school and not spend that much amount on the, on the daughter's uh, education but today you know they're proudly sending their girls to a government school the girls are actually speaking fluent english clearing uh, tough competitive competitive exams and that is the kind of contribution that uh, women in this country or the support that we need you know it is not about giving one uh, sewing machine anymore i mean we if we have to fill that gap then there is no question that you have to give some sort of direct cash incentives to the women okay let me, let me get a response from uh, let it's me get a response purely. from the bjp spokesperson national spokesperson sanju varma on this and then i uh, then i uh, yeah, yeah, bring yeah, in another guest let me finish guest. one thing you know put Mara, politics, can i come in please yes please economic. yes please only sanju varma now on the screen please now yes thank you yes, yes. so first and foremost i heard the amadmi party spokesperson saying she wants to give me a piece of her mind madam your arvin kejriwal model is this manish sisodia cooling his heels in the lockup satendra jain cooling his heels in the lockup you have an argument and i think you can interpret more more can i more 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 extend that curse or when the other party speaks you take them yes solo please go ahead, go ahead go ahead yeah i want solo i want to be solo on air like abhi okay, ko 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 she was talking yes please. no i will speak when you take me alone on air yes can you be fair for a change if you take me alone on air i will speak without being heckled because you did that to the congress you took them alone on air without being that. heckled we, we have done that we'll have no, so you, you do it again okay so you do it yes. again here yes. you are yes. here you are it's only you and me yes. please go ahead yes now it's only you and me now let abhinandita mathur listen like i heard her you don't need to give me a piece of my mind miss mathur your arvin kejriwal model has failed a man who said ki hum to kattar imandar ki sarkar hain unke aap sara ka sara jo shirsh netritva hai the top brass of kejriwal is in the lockup right from manish sisodia bail denied 22 times satendra jain bail denied by the supreme court 17 times sanjay singh bail denied by the supreme court 8 times so when the aap aap the party comes here maria on your show and gives a lecture to the bjp on integrity on political high ground on morality it is laughable and let me tell you to the congress and yes by the way do you remember a man called premodaya khakha he was hired by kailash gehlot a close confidant of arvind kejriwal he raped his yeah, ex friend's daughter for the last two years can i please finish premodaya khakha of the aam aadmi party raped his friend's daughter a minor for three years at a okay. stretch and he was in the wcd department of the kejriwal government so don't sit here and wax eloquent about the kejriwal model okay. which is non existent just okay. 10 seconds more maria 10 seconds more i have the guts to sit here and say let bridge bush and sharan be hanged by the news if he is proven guilty but what about the congress party meva ram jain a 75 year old former mla of the congress from rajasthan was raping 5 year olds and 6 year olds no, yes government yes years. i'm Not going to i'm going to get a response, response from alka on this but, but before that let me go to yeah. hyderabad so where we have k kavita brs mlc Jain. joining us live k kavita i appreciate your time today you protested in hyderabad against the telangana congress government's decision to implement horizontal reservation for women in in recruitment and educational institutions uh, i want to begin with that what exactly is your objection Well Maria ji thank you for having me on the show and first of all a very happy women's day to you and uh, to the nation through your channel and uh, today we protested unfortunately on march 8th we and we usually celebrate we had to protest today because uh, this government co current congress government in telangana had rolled back uh, geo which was securing 33% reservation for women in the government jobs Uh, and since they rolled back the GO and they gave a new GO, now the women of Telangana won't be getting more than 12 to 15 percent of reservation in the government jobs. Uh, we, we 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 were fearing this, and uh, in fact, in the last couple of days, when this government gave a few jobs, we could prove it to the government that the reservation is drastically going down. 
and uh, despite uh, many objections they did not consider or nor in interact with any stakeholders and gave this GO. So today's protest was completely about rolling back this GO. I, I believe Maria ji you remember in 1996 women got reservations in government jobs and government uh, uh, government jobs and also in educational institutions a 33% quota was ensured for women. That kind of gave us a good ground. Uh, we now have many women students in Telangana universities. For example, in Usmania, today 72% of Usmania students are women. And many universities in, across in Telangana are 60%, 70% are women enrollment. So this enrollment will come down if they don't see a scope getting good government jobs. And once the enrollment in universities and colleges comes down, then it's going to regress further by people getting you know, married off at a very young age, getting into child marriages, etc. So we are this step by this current Congress government is a very regressive step in terms of women and their empowerment. Okay, you know, as a woman leader yourself, I want to understand... Uh, when you are in that room, which is largely full of men who are taking the decision for the party, how much of an influence do women leaders exercise in policy making in their parties? Not as much as parliament. I mean, that's a different issue altogether, a different platform. Well, um, unfortunately, not so much, right? Because if uh, all the women had their way or had their say in all the parties, including Sonia Madam in her own party, I believe more women would have already gotten seats in every party including my own party. So looks like we don't have much of a say there. But then when it comes to um, implementing various schemes, taking up issues related to women when it comes to sensitive issues like education, health, security of women, every party usually gives it a top priority. Whether men or women, we are constantly talking about security, education and uh, you know, empowerment of women. So that kind of makes it to the main agenda. But when it actually comes to giving political power or positions to women, every party unfortunately has been uh, backing out. And that I believe is also a mindset change, is also a change that is going to come with time and with more empowering tools like Women Reservation Bill in the parliament now being passed. Uh, I hope it will come into force uh, you know, right after the... Um, census, etc. So once that happens, I think we'll take a very good leap in the leadership positions as well. My last question to you, since you uh, had been very honest in your response, uh, you know, I, I, does it does it take a lot to be a woman leader in in regional parties? It does. It does because we really need to work twice as hard, and then we constantly have many, many, many glass ceilings. It is in any field, but more so in politics, because uh, uh, I believe fundamentally we are very trusting as women. And in regional parties, which is a very smaller area, uh, it, the game gets really murkier and murkier. But yes, we are uh, wading through, we are fighting our way ahead. And uh, many women in many regional parties have broken glasses and they've, uh, you know, aced, they've made their place to the top. They've become the chief ministers. So, you know, uh, all of us in the next generation can only hope for that, that, you know, we'll keep keep powering through and fighting through and uh, get to that seat one day. All right, K. Kavitha, I appreciate your time. Let me bring in Neerja Chaudhary now. Neerja Chaudhary, as, as a woman journalist who has uh, covered politics and has covered several women uh, leaders, uh, why do we talk about women only in the context of voters? Not as many, as much as leaders, you know, in the sense that, the kind of scrutiny or, or the kind of discussion which is usually there around women as leaders doesn't happen as much. Why? I think, uh, you know, I would say before answering that question, I was sit uh, sitting here on your program thinking, what is so different about March 8, 2024 from the previous years? Hmm. And what is different is that today women are being sought, wooed, scheme after scheme rolled out for them hmm. and uh, that ne that never happened before uh, every single party now more women are coming out to vote women are emerging as a vote bank uh, and there is an aspirational revolution taking place amongst women maria hmm. if you you know when i hit the road at election time and talk to women younger women in particular they, their dreams are so different from the dreams even 10 years ago. They are, they are breaking glass ceilings and they want to go higher and higher and higher. And that is something we need to celebrate. Now, it is absolutely true 
that uh, while uh, uh, they, you know more women are getting educated and uh, more women need to get into the labor force to become economically independent in the policy areas in parliament and legislatures their number is not what they deserve to have there hmm. and uh, also in the policy domain you know today they are in every field making their mark but not in as large a number that they should be there and of course uh, today the women's reservation bill has been passed by parliament but actually it will be implemented in 2029 maybe mm -hmm. even 2023 2034 because this dealing that's linked to the delimitation exercise but yet parliament has made a commitment so that much step forward we have taken but this is an area that political parties will really need to uh, take note of and you know i personally feel maria and if i may say so this that i feel this century belongs to women this century amongst those women will belong to the women of india and in the women of india to the younger women of india because you know if you if you get a sense of their aspiration and what they want to do you know you can't stop this march you can delay it but you can't stop this march that's very well put actually nirja chaudhary i appreciate that and uh, we are really fortunate that on the big fight tonight we have an all women panel uh, so thank you so much to all the women who uh, agreed to join me here priyanka bharti uh, as spokesperson of the rjd as a party uh, which had a woman chief minister in rabdi devi but then also it started that conversation that our women uh, in as panchayat heads more of a rubber stamp rather than those who have a voice of their own uh maria ji uh, i don't know many persons uh, are not aware of this but it was bihar in 1992 2 january 1992 when the whole world could couldn't even think about menstruation leave it was lalu prasad yadav who agreed and gave two days menstruation leave for women of india for women of bihar and i wish if uh, it was if uh, in the power structure if women had also a say just like in the voting percentage you saw that uh, the percentage of women who vote are rising if in the power structure also we had a say each and every corner of the uh, part of india might have had pad vending machines but still we don't see it that's the that's the shocking reality and uh, when it uh, when uh, sanju ji or anyone was talking about women representation that is 33% that women reservation bill but i still uh, try to i'll try to remind them we have as a, a socialist party always asked about quota within quota for reservation bill as well because women are do women are also born with caste there is sub categorization within women and you have to understand the pains of sc women st women obc women it's different there are sub categories in within the women community but as Priyanka, well but there is nothing stopping the political parties from going ahead with this sub categorization yes yes that has not Maria been ji, part of the legislation but nothing yes. stops an rjd or other political yes. parties yes. to have to ensure that that's why maria ji today mlc list was uh, uh, mlc list came out from rjd side and you would see over there within six there are six members and inside them there are three women women candidates one is ravi ji from obc community one is uh, urmila thakur from, who is carrying the legacy of karpuri thakur from ebc community and other is uh, other is from amale that is all the mahagathbandhan we are mahagathbandhan uh, government in bihar and you see and the third is shashi yadav and she is also obc lady lady so we are showing it that we have done it 2015 and 2020 you okay. saw that bihar had more Maria. voting percentage of women okay. than men let let and me bring in vijilia sure, uh, that me yes that that's true you know RGD. because it's the women voter who changed yes. the elections last time around in and bihar that's, that's, right. Right. that's why in 2020 the they changed the the, the the entire direction of the election in 2020 that's why our jdp is okay. the largest party maria ji you saw that yes in 2015 yes well yazini so women are having yes from, the spokesperson of the dmk can there be more yeah. assertion of women is there is there a truth to that is there a possibility yeah, um, i can understand your question you're asking me when that were you know when that voter turnout uh, in the voter turnout the women representation is high why don't we have it in the uh, you know parliament or 
So here we need to consider the argument put forward by uh, Chief Justice uh, Chandra Chod. Yeah. So what he said is uh, the lack of representation of women in the higher judiciary is because there's a lower representation of women in the lower judiciaries, right? So that's the same when it comes to the politics. The women there has to be a natural progression of women participation in the politics, right, from the gro- ground level to the parliament. So that does not happen because there's not enough representation of welfare schemes for the women in throughout the uh, country. With regards to Tamil Nadu, I've saw I've seen the Sanju Verma, ma- ma- if I'm right with the name, you know, making uh, huge claims about the you know the BJP model, more or less, which is which can be equated to the Gujarat model and putting down the uh, Aam Aadmi pa- model. I would like to throw some light on the Dravidian. model where we have been working on the recognition of the aspirations of the women we also we were, we have been simultaneously working on the welfare schemes and also the representation of women in various sectors of life what's really appall- uh, appalling is that the bjp which called all these welfare schemes as ravdi you know uh, ravdi or freebie schemes mocked at these welfare schemes is now take a, uh, you know talking about such wel- welfare schemes and just uh, no let's let uh, i don't understand how, who is the moderator here is it sanjeev verma or the actual moderator here so let me finish my uh, you know points and then you can counter to it sanjeev verma <laughs> yes. so decent for you Yeah. So the uh, the basically when we come to the Dravidian model, so initially what we did was we focused on the education of the women. Okay. So we there was a policy which was uh, made by the DMK regimen. I think in, it was in two thousand nine. The current financial minister, the Tangam Tenarizu, was the previous uh, was the then uh, you know school education minister. We framed a policy in a such a way that the accessibility to school education in the government sector is very you know it's very much accessible to the girl children. So we need to we had a primary school within one one you know one kilometer radius. And then a middle um, middle school, you know, middle higher secondary school within a five kilometer radius, and a higher secondary school within a seven kilometer radius, so that the accessibility is easy. So accessibility is not the only thing. At the same time, we also needed to focus on the mobility. So during the same regime, uh, you know, the, the, the Kalingar uh, Karnataka, the late Chief Minister, he also brought in a scheme called as a free bus pass screens for the bus pass for the school, school and the college students, which which helped with the mobility. At the same time, simultaneously in parallel, uh, we also worked on the reservation of uh, for women in the. Uh, jobs the one the girl kavita ma'am has spoken about the 33% reservation and yes. also uh, right now if we see we uh, when it comes to the dmk we have been working on the in the party as well as in the government to bring in reservation for the women given okay, when we take the local bodies there is about 50% of women representation when we take in uh, and also in the in case of the mayors 50% of them are mayors and it is just not this the stamp paper that you were just calling chennai which is one of the very important uh, corporation is being given to a women uh, you know yes. uh, And, and yeah. thank you for so sharing that hope, experience and no, what has been one, done. What Let me go back no, to Sanju Verma. No, no, one second, one second. From, no, yeah, from yeah, the I just have a question to Sanju Verma. I have a question to Sanju Verma. I have a question to Sanju Verma. One person, so, so she has BJP to respond to all the points. Go yeah, ahead, yeah, Sanju Verma. I have a question. I have a question. I, I also, I, or maybe it may be a statement. What the Dravidian parties are be doing is a welfare scheme, whereas what BJP now is doing is purely a transactional one. Okay. I give you money, you give me vote. That's what BJP is doing. Yes, please go ahead. And it is only yes, because of elections. One party is free, and another party is free. Bees, go ahead. Bringing down the price yes. of the crude oil that they got Marek from the Russia. They have been talking about it in every possible fashion. Sanju, please, 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 Okay. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 okay. I'm coming back to you. I'm coming to you, Alka. Yes, Sanju Verma now, please now. Yes. Thank you, Mary. I have you noticed? हर किसी को Sanju Verma और BJP के साथ कोई न कोई शिकायत है. Be that as it may, I have this to say. You know, Mary, on a more on a more lighter note, you know, I'm not a seasoned politician. Uh, you know, I've joined politics very recently. For the longest time, I was in the corporate sector, and the reason I'm telling you this is for your audience to know because you know there's. दिस परसेप्शन दैट बीजेपी एक बहुत दकियानुसी पार्टी है आई वर्क इन लीडरशिप पोजिशन एट जेपी मॉर्गन फिलिप कैपिटल एच डी एफ सी सिक्योरिटीज आर वर्क अब्रॉड यू नो फ्रॉम लंडन टू न्यूयॉर्क टू हॉन्गकॉन्ग वट हैव यू यू नो आई थिंक आई एम एज मॉडर्न एज दे कम ट्रस्ट मी वेन आई से दिस टू यू मारिया आज तक नो बट इन बीजेपी हैज टोल्ड मी ड्रेस लाइक दिस और ईट लाइक दिस और वॉक लाइक दिस or don't talk like this or talk like this or conduct yourself like this so the first point i'm making is for all the people out there who say that ye ek dakhyanusi party hai you know you need to get a ground reality check because that's not the case the second point is this who is this woman who is giving background music you know she wanted uh, okay go ahead, go ahead go ahead go ahead sanju it's only you on the now, screen I'm, please 
yeah Thank now you. one very important point which i make, want to make bilkis bano ke bare mein aap baat karte ho sahi hai do you have also the sensitivity to talk about shahbano who was denied a monthly alimony of 179 rupees by rajiv gandhi she was thrown out by her husband along with her five daughters then maria who is this woman who is this ankut woman who is this ankut woman who is giving me background music no 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 sanju sanju make your point because alka will speak after you please go ahead yeah yeah कांग्रेस की कर्नाटका सरकार में एक नाबालिग का गैंगरेप होता है आप चुप हो जाते हैं और मुस्लिम वुमेन इज गैंगरेप by four muslim men because she chose to fall in love with a hindu man in karnataka in bengaluru congress ke muh mein dahi jam jata hai and let me tell you one more thing i am willing to condemn braj bhushan sharan singh are you willing to condemn what happened to shahbano i am willing to condemn kuldeep sengar are you willing to condemn shahjahan sheikh i am willing to condemn what happened in uttar pradesh are you willing to condemn the fact that under ashok gehlot there were 6000 rapes every single year and when the alwar okay. gang rape happened priyanka gandhi was holidaying in ranthambore when the alwar gang rape okay, you know happened, we are we are priyanka discussing gandhi women and the game changers of this election let's talk about that i think that will that is something that we should be talking yeah, about given the day and and we have an all women's panel so let's talk about it yes go ahead alka par ye bjp ki pravakta ne pehle ka in sab ko mujhse problem hai sirf hame nahi desh ki aadhi abadi ko aapse problem are bhai fir aapne kaha main rajniti se nahi corporate background se hu to bhajpa ko kahiye pravakta badal de kyunki aapko as a corporator nahi as a political spokesperson bheja aur aapke paas jawab nahi aap bachne ki koshish kar rahi ab main aapko bata rahi hu ground reality in last 45 days i covered 22 पैंतालीस दिन में 22 राज्य मैंने दौरे किए आप कितनी जगह गई है ग्राउंड रियलिटी आपको बताती हूँ जिन आप इज्जत घर की बात कर रही है ना उस इज्जत घर में बेटियां सुरक्षित नहीं है बलात्कार और रेप हो रहे हैं और उन्हें बचाने का काम कोई और नहीं डबल इंजन की भाजपा सरकार और नेता कर रहे हैं दही अगर किसी के मुंह में जमी हुई है तो संसद में बैठी हुई महिला बाल विकास मंत्री स्मृति ईरानी जी के मुंह में दही जमी हुई है इतना अपराध हो गया लेकिन उनके मुंह से पीड़िताओं के लिए उन्हें न्याय दिलाने के लिए अपराधियों के खिलाफ एक शब्द नहीं सुनाई देता है आप बिल्कुल बात मत करिए इज्जत घरों की जम्मू कश्मीर इज वेल बिकॉज संजू जी थोड़ा मेडिटेशन करिए थोड़े से भी आप डिस्टर्ब हो जाते हैं look at their own choices very differently from the male in the family from the from the men in the family that's a pattern which has emerged and will it be similar to even your state or union territory at the moment can sanju ji read this I'll, I'll one i'll share a small anecdote with you when i went to college st stephen's college one of the best colleges in the country the first question my friends asked me was was i going to get married while being in college because they assumed i would get married at 21 22 and right now at this point they are all married i am not so let's stop with this stereotyping of kashmiri muslim women and assume that somehow what happens in our families is very different from what happens in a kashmiri muslim family if you look at kashmiri muslim women and what national conference has done for them progressively through years National Conference as a political party passed its first ideological resolution a document which was called the Naya Kashmir document in 1944 in 1944 it had a separate women's charter that said the women will be allowed the right to vote the right to participate in elections the right to divorce and the right to hold inherited property the right to work that was in 1944 even before the indian constitution promised these um rights to indian women so that is the kind of core national conference had and over the years when it was voted into power it pushed so beyond going beyond the kind of tokenism that we have heard it actually pushed women from 4% literacy rate in 1953 to 65% in 2010 hmm. this is what happens when you don't look at tokenism you instead focus on the jahan pe pura 
रोटन सिस्टम है जो आइडियोलॉजी है जो कोर है वेन यू फोकस ऑन द कोर डेट्स वेन यू अचीव दिस काइंड ऑफ ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन फॉर वेमेन एट दिस पॉइंट मारिया जी इफ यू लुक एट वेमेन इन जम्मू एंड कश्मीर आर टी एफ आर आर टोटल फर्टिलिटी रेट रिमेन्स द लोवेस्ट इन द कंट्री बिकॉज यू वुड अज्यूम कश्मीरी मुस्लिम वेमेन आर हैविंग मोर बेबीज बिकॉज दैट्स अ काइंड ऑफ ऑटोनोमी दे हैव इन द फैमिलीज आर मैरिज रेट्स द एज एट विच वी मैरी इज प्रोटी हाई our maternal mortality rates in 2010 if you look at it when the national conference government was there happened to be one of the lowest in the entire country and that's also because the kind of educational reforms that sheikh abdullah sahab's wife akbar jahan had initiated where girls were dragged out of their homes okay. sometimes even in a forcible way to be taken to school okay i have and just then- enough time now for the last word which i'll give it to give to manisha priyam as a sociologist and someone who has uh travel to various parts of india and uh, has come up with understanding of patterns which exist in women voters i would say more the merrier it's okay for them to enjoy all the welfare schemes which are being announced uh, the welfare schemes really are targeted towards women at the base mm. i mean it's about if you look at the component of the schemes i am horrified to hear the word freebie associated to it i mean to be able to cook a meal yeah. to be able to look after a family and children women are not asking for diamonds or True. they're not asking for mercedes cars they're asking for maintaining the family yes. look at the honesty of the women every time you deliver a scheme with honesty you strengthen the indian state so okay. the indian woman is actually asking for a non corruption oriented and a welfare oriented indian state that's the long term but i think the frontier is that when the indian woman bent with her back working in its flaming fields when she is able to transition and come and sit on corporate boards in bombay when they believe the reservation is not only about the english speaking woman True. but about that woman with her back bent in the field and for the lady who spoke about karpuri thakur's daughter let me remind her that karpuri thakur's wife is the forgotten woman who died while transplanting paddy in the fields hmm. so that's the woman when she's seen on the screen i think i live to see that day i will say hurra happy women's day when the flaming fields and the glitzy india merge together what fascinating way to end this so will everyone say happy women's day happy to all women's of day us to each happy women's day and yes. to have many more women's day perhaps not only one day so thank you so much uh, for your time everyone uh, that's all from me on this episode of the big fight uh, i'll be back next week with another topic and then we'll have the big debate